Well, hello, everyone. We have Dr. Bar Perry Bush here from Bluffton University. Perry, how are you today? I'm good, man. I'm getting ready for a good Thanksgiving. How about yourself? Yeah, good. Thank you. So we're going to be talking about an important issue that many voters voted on, and that was issue one. So let's talk about it. Absolutely. You know, it's uh, it, it's still rocking the world, the political world here in Ohio and also nationally. I mean, what happened here in Ohio is watched very carefully around the country, Chris, and uh, with good reason. And of course, the reverberations are still rippling out from the vote here on November 7th. Mm -hmm, yep. You definitely, I mean, you still hear about it day in and day out. You know, voters in every state, you know, still talk about this, so. Absolutely. I mean, look, here's the reality that it, that it won here by a substantial margin. I mean, really remarkably high margin, much higher than I think most people, including me, expected 53 to 43, 57 to 43 percent statewide. And this means that reproductive rights, basically the, the ability of a woman to terminate an unwanted pregnancy up to fetal viability or about 23 weeks is now enshrined in the state constitution. And so that's now the reality here in Ohio. And also it's interesting to see how it won. It won by racking up large pluralities, excuse me, in the urban counties, but also Chris in, in 18 counties that voted for Trump three years ago. I mean, a lot of red counties uh, issue one, one there by some of them by substantial margins. For instance, I did a little digging into the numbers in Lorraine County near Cleveland, um, Trump took 50% of the vote there. Issue one passed in Lorraine County by 61%, or even Wood County where Trump won by 53%. Uh, voters there preferred issue one by 55%. So this means of course that a lot of independents and many Republicans were switching over and, and voting for issue one and uh, here in Allen County even. Um, you know, it, it didn't come close to any Allen County. I think issue one got about 35% of the vote, but that's a much higher percentage, especially higher percentage than Joe Biden got here uh, three years ago. So yeah, it seems to be the clear will of the voters that they want a reproductive rights enshrined in the state constitution. And of course, as we just mentioned, it reverberated elsewhere. I mean, in Kentucky, you know, you got a, you got a pretty deep red state, but a, a Democratic governor, Andy Bashir, won re-election in part because of his commitment to reproductive rights. That election wasn't even as close as people thought. Bashir won. Uh, the Democrats flipped both houses of the Virginia State Legislature. Uh, in, in clear rebuke to Governor Republican Governor Glenn Youngkin, who was calling for a, a, a abortion ban after 15 weeks and uh, ran on that. And the uh, Virginia voters uh, hammered him pretty good on that one and, and flipped the legislature. So around the country, this is what's going on, and we'll see where it goes from here. Yeah, so this is obviously has been a very important issue for, for many people, many families. And, and obviously, it doesn't matter if you're Republican, Democrat, Independent. It doesn't matter. People are going out to vote, uh, mainly in support, it seems like, uh, for, for the abortion rights. And what, what do you think happens for the future of this? You know, it's, that's a big question. Well, it, it, it's interesting to see what happened immediately here in Ohio after the vote. And look, Chris, you're absolutely right. This is a profoundly emotional and difficult issue on both sides. People feel very deeply about this. And I, I think here in Allen County, which is clearly, I mean, you know, uh, the, 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 the pro-life vote came in very, very strongly here. I still see as I drive around, as I'm sure you do, no on one signs, people to refuse to take them out of their, their lawns. And I understand that many area viewers you know, who very strongly pro-life will be in deep grief about this bill and uh, about this about this new addition to the state constitution. But, you know, when, when immediately legislators in Columbus, within hours or days of the vote, say that, that, that we're not done, that we're going to do all we can to overturn this, we're going to bar, uh, we're going to have legislative review of judicial decisions. I mean, uh, Matt Huffman of this district, you know, the state Senate president promised a quote unquote revolving door of ballot issues to try to undo this. I mean, it raises some issues about the health of a democracy. If you don't mind, I, I like to take my, at least a minute to give a little history lesson here. Um, I mean, that's what I do for a living, right? Give history lessons. And you know, 250 years ago, one of the things that motivated, most motivated the American revolutionaries was their deep grievance that England wasn't, they weren't represented in England's parliament. And they had a different idea of representation. The reality was that 250 years ago, most people in England were represented by England's parliament either. There were about 5% of English population could vote. But the idea was, hey, look, we represent you symbolically, that's all, but we know what's best for you. And uh, you just have to trust us in our superior wisdom and judgment to do what's best. Well, what we've had now here in Ohio was two straight elections. I mean, the August you know, election on issue one, that was also clearly about abortion rights. 
And um, it was an effort, of course, to, to, to make sure you had a 60% threshold to change the Constitution and to, to try to defeat this last issue on the ballot. And the voters rejected that overwhelmingly, too. So in two straight elections, voters here in Ohio have said, no, we want reproductive rights in the state constitution. And when state legislatures openly avow that they're going to try to do their best to overturn this and not, and, and they, they just know best for us, well, that raises some profoundly disturbing questions about the commitment to democracy in this state. Uh, look, we, you know, we talked about this last time with Holly. You know, sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. And sometimes the candidate you feel deeply about wins, sometimes the voters turn them out and you are grieved about that and you feel badly about that. But you know what? You just accept the results. That's what a democracy means. And to not do that, to not accept the results of an election and to merely tell the voters it was stolen or it was a, it's a, it's a conspiracy, that is so corrosive to democracy. And so, yeah, I don't doubt that people are deeply grieved about this. I know that people who are on the pro-life side are, are, are mourning and they're upset. And, uh, and that's, yeah, that's, um, it's a sad, hard thing. It's a difficult issue all over the place. But to have the state legislators in Columbus merely defy this, they're going to try to defy the will of the voters. Chris, that, that's problematic. And I hope that people will at least begin to think about the implications of those kind of maneuvers. Right. Well, Dr. Perry Bush, I think that we're going to be discussing this issue for a long time to come. And there's going to be Absolutely. many arguments as well. So thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate your insight. So thank you once again. Always good to be here, Chris, and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. And don't go away. We have more when we return.